You've seen Sicario. Do you remember the Buffalo Chip Saloon? In today's Sicario study, we'll see that the script had a very different scenario for what happened there. And we'll discover that the reason for the changes is something I've talked about on this channel over and over and over again. I'm Corel Seegers. I sold my first produced script at age 17. I co-wrote Australia's biggest budget indie, and I'm a fan of the work of Taylor Sheridan. This month, I'm perfecting my screenwriting style by studying Sicario using a technique I borrowed from Stephen King, Hunter S. Thompson, and Shakespeare. The secret is to copy and transcribe great scripts and movies. I'm copying Sicario word for word, and you can follow here as I learn. This funky method is part of the immersion courses, and at the end of this video, I'll give you a handy download and a discount in case you want more of this. If you missed our earlier videos, be sure to check out the playlist. Today, we're going into what I would call the midpoint reversal sequence. For more on that monster, check out our other videos. We ended up in the um, Buffalo Chip Saloon, and there's a bit of... Um, cowboy life going on here uh, don't think it made the film the dialogue about um, rednecks and racism is not in the film um, yeah it's just not given any attention however in the film the character um, of Ted is set up earlier we see him in the background pass through the frame and we see him look at Kate so there's a there's a setup or at least a plant that this is um, a setup for her here it gives away seems surprised to see reggie She's not that straightforward in the film, uh, although the subtext body language is pretty clear. It's a really nice sequence for Kate, who up to this point has been shown to be a pretty tough, cold, hard woman, show the more human side. And it feels like we're in some sort of a, a romantic subplot. And it had been set up in the conversation she had earlier with Reggie that she's been single for a while and ready to meet someone new. And here that last line is a point of view from Reggie's, I'd say. We watched them walk off through the club, so we feel like we're still with Reggie. It may well be, technically speaking, an omniscient point of view. In the film, instead of this rather erotic full play um, we have a great transition where on the dance floor he pulls her up to his body his upper body and that's cut to the similar motion at her apartment um, full play goes somewhat more physical and in the film you don't really need that it depends on what sort of tone you want, what the audience is, what rating. So in the film, Reggie doesn't get this moment. We stay with Kate. So what happens between um, Reggie and the girl we don't get to see. So this is not in the film and um, in the film, the realization that it was a setup is experienced through our main character. So we stay in Kate's point of view uh, when we find out, when we see the, the wristband. Sheridan uh, abbreviates it to Buffalo Chip. We have to type it each time, otherwise we could have easily just taken a pre-printed version from Final Draft. And it almost seems like a different sort of film when you read this, right? And you see the difference here. She doesn't realize until Reggie intervenes 
in the film she knows what's going on and then she's on her own and that that moment of suspense when um, uh, Ted attacks her is very powerful also it's not Reggie who comes at the rescue that's Alejandro and see this explanation is unnecessary when we experience it through Kate's POV. Yeah, I would personally not go back to mentioning orgasms uh, at this point in the story because it's the last thing on our mind, on the character's mind and the audience's mind, I'd say. At the end, I'll give you a list of all my points, but as we continue, see which choices you agree with and which you don't. That's how you develop your style. Now, back to work. In the film, she makes a quip uh, about the fact that they're now trying to make it look as if she says it. Brought him back here, though. That's smart. Yeah, love how we're gonna pretend like I planned this. Why don't you just write that in your report? She looks at it and must accept the fact that she is once again a smoker. It's really about making the reader, if we hadn't already picked up on it, aware what's going on here. Because of this incident and Reggie's responsibility in the script version, their, their relationship seems to be tighter than it is in, this, in the film. I mean, they're, they're on really good terms. They seem to be friends that have known each other for a long time. There is, is those intimate moments when he makes a remark about her bra. But still, the fact that in the script he saves her life, that strengthens their bond and it's not in the film. Nah, you didn't know it's us. You just wanted to know what you know. You're after us, not you. This monologue is earlier in the film. It's in the uh, Juarez sequence when they drive uh, under the bridge with the corpses. It doesn't go this personal. Um, so the time he speaks the dialogue here in the script, we feel that he's speaking about his own experience in the film when he makes these comments while they're driving. It doesn't feel all that personal. Voila, that's it. In a screenplay, the entire sequence with Ted plays out in and around the saloon. In the film, however, Kate takes Ted home. This makes her more vulnerable when the truth about Ted comes out. But more importantly, it's Kate who finds out about Ted in the film. Which brings us to the recurring lesson from Sicario. In the script, while Kate is having fun with Ted outside, the POV moves to Reggie, who finds out about Ted's real motivation. This moment is taken away from the main character and it is what we call dramatic irony. We have critical information that the character doesn't. However, by staying in Kate's POV in the film, we have dramatic tension, which is far more powerful under the circumstances. We're with Kate when she realizes she's in danger and nobody's around to save her. By robbing Reggie of his title of savior in the film, he becomes somewhat of a lesser character. In the film, the honors go to Alejandro, and that makes sense for several reasons. First of all, he's the titular character, but more importantly, it gives his relationship with Kate a truly interesting dynamic when we go into the third act. Motifs are tools for highlighting theme. Say that 10 times. We see Kate take up smoking again, and the moments she pines for a cigarette are also those moments she has to cope with something that doesn't gel with her worldview. In that respect, the ending of the film says something about her arc. The Ted sequence offers a potential to fulfill Kate's sexual desire, but in the script it gets a whole lot more emphasis. So much so that even after Ted is taken out, there is a reference back to her missing out on an orgasm. In the film, the whole sequence played out quite differently, but even then, tonally, the script version just didn't sit well, as by that point, we'd all moved on. And apparently, Emily Blunt wasn't all that enamored with the script version either. 
Sheridan's stories ignore the coastal metropoles and focus on ordinary America instead, and that includes cowboys and sheriffs. Here in Sicario, we have the Marshalls, the Buffalo Chip Saloon, and the character of Ted as quintessential Sheridan elements. It's all part of his voice. This reference to rednecks and racism didn't make the film, possibly because it's not what the film is about. It would have diluted the razor sharp focus of Sicario. And what do you think the theme is so far? Perhaps it has something to do with how far we're willing to go to preserve our comfortable lifestyles. You can download these seven points if you follow the link below. Can you see the merits of copying a great script now? Would you like to sharpen your voice? Well, join me for the last few days. Or better even, why don't you use the same method to prepare for your own next script? Immersion Script is a three-week bootcamp where you learn in a similar way from the world's best screenwriters in seven top genres. Don't wait. Today I have a 50% discount code for you. Details are below. If this video sparked your interest, subscribe and hit the bell to stay tuned for more insights. We're getting closer to the finale. If you haven't seen the film, it has a big surprise for you. Happy watching, happy writing. Cheers.